Hello everyone, good evening, welcome to 9th and 10th channel of Baiju's. I'm your teacher Ankita and I welcome you all in today's class. In today's class, we will be discussing about the circulatory system or we can say that we will be discussing about the double circulation, a very, very important topic. From the exam point of view, so please make sure everyone to stay with us till the end. Good evening everyone, I can see so many of you have joined, right? So it's a part two, let me write it over here. So maybe in the future, if you're watching this video, it's for you. We had a part one. It's there in the uh, description box. There's a link. So please make sure you click on that and watch part one. And this is part two. So in the part one, we discussed about the structure of the human heart. Right. And in the part two, we will be discussing about the circulatory system. Right. Of course, in the detail, if we say we'll be looking at the double circulation. So I hope that all of you are ready. Everyone quickly call out your friends. I don't want anyone to miss any interesting concept that we are learning right so everyone please make sure to ask your friends to join the session we'll be starting in few seconds yeah we'll start quickly okay everyone so there this is a part two right and what we have in the part two yes so let's get started so of course over here everyone we have this timetable please make sure to follow this timetable right and uh, you can check on our channel we have the classes accordingly so please make sure to subscribe to the channel and please make sure to hit the like button for this video. Right now everyone, with that, let's quickly start our class. To recap, right, we'll be using the visual. So I want all of you to stay focused. Now we'll be moving to a different, uh, different platform and we will be doing a quick recap. So I want all of you to pay attention. Are you ready everyone? Right, I hope that all of you are ready. Give me a quick thumbs up in the chat. And if you're watching this video later, what you can do, you can just stay focused. We will be having a very quick recap of the previous class. Now, this particular visuals are strictly mainly focusing on the CBSC. So, let's get started. Uh, sir, can I move? Sure, sir. Yeah. Okay, everyone. So, here we go. Here we have, right? So, what we'll be doing, we will be taking a look at the heart, right? But, of course, it's a visual representation. Well, let me just show you. If you're... If any of if any one of you have missed the last class, please make sure you go and watch. We have the structure also. So we have started with the structure. Now I thought that we will be taking a look at the visual. So get, get ready everyone. So we'll, we'll move. Yes. Okay everyone. Yes. So everyone, uh, those of you just give us a minute. We just need 30 seconds more, right? Uh, so those of you who haven't watched any of, this is, uh, any of the sessions on the transportation in animals, right? So I would request you to please watch the session that we have. We did uh, the session on blood and blood vessels. The last session we discussed about the human heart, the structure of the human heart. And in today's class, what we are discussing, we are discussing the double circulation. Right? How the beating of our heart happens. So everyone, what we have over here, I hope it, it's clearly visible. Give me a quick thumbs up everyone. See what we have over here without wasting your time. Let's get started. So we know that in our heart we have four chambers. I can see that all of you are saying yes, yes, yes. Right? So in our heart, how many chambers we have? We have four chambers everyone. I hope that you can see the beautiful heart right over here. It's the visual representation of our heart. And over here we can see it's a 3D structure. So we can see various blood vessels all together, right? And of course, we can see the beating of the heart. So we'll, we'll be focusing on that in a bit. But everyone, let's take a look at the various important parts. So in our heart, we have four chambers. We can see the left atrium. We have right ventricle, left ventricle. We have uh, left ventricle, right ventricle, the... Okay, let me ask you only. It will be good for you. So, which is the largest artery, everyone? Which is the largest artery that carries the blood from the left ventricle to the different parts of the body? Yes? Very good, very good. Everyone, can you quickly tell me which part, right? Which is the, great, uh, which is the longest artery which carries the oxygen-rich blood from the left ventricle to the different parts of the body? Very good. It's the iota. So, over here, right? This we have is the iota. Can you see this? This one, which has three opening over here. That is iota. Okay. Now everyone, what is the function of pulmonary vein? 
right we have seen that pulmonary vein is there on the left side and what was the function of pulmonary vein we know that veins usually carries the carbon dioxide rich blood but over here the pulmonary vein carries oxygen rich blood from the lungs to the left atrium very good then of course we have pulmonary artery the opposite of it pulmonary artery carries the carbon dioxide rich blood or deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the lungs for the process of oxygenation clear everyone so we have four chambers right we discussed about the main arteries and veins apart from that we have vena cava the largest vein which carries the carbon dioxide rich blood to the right side of the heart gives the blood into the right atrium then to the right ventricle then from there to the pulmonary artery everyone are we clear with that quick thumbs up everyone are we clear with this yes everyone very good very good now apart from that what we have discussed now these are the important things that we have in our cbsc textbook apart from that we discussed about the valves right you remember we discussed about the different valves so let me just pull a little bit zoom in for you so you remember we discussed about the bicuspid bicuspid has two flaps over here we can clearly see there are the two flaps right over here i cannot zoom more than that everyone so just give me a moment i'll use the pen okay so over here right you can see okay ha huh, we can see this right can you see there are two flaps right one and two that is bicuspid valve okay bicuspid valve valve sorry not valve okay and over here we have the tricuspid right we can see one two and three so we discussed about this right and it's really important these valves actually help in preventing the back flow of the blood right apart from that we have semi lunar valves so we have aortic valve which is present between the left ventricle to aorta and then we have pulmonary valve which is present between the right ventricle and pulmonary artery everyone are we clear yes ma'am is the upper valve and lower vena cava have different no so of course vena cava is the biggest artery if there are some separation like divisions of that so superior vena cava will carry the blood from the upper part of the body the carbon dioxide rich blood and the inferior vena cava will carry the carbon dioxide rich blood from the lower part of the body yes everyone are we clear ma'am why do we call it as pulmonary artery and uh, artery and artery and not as a vein shreya so artery and vein are the name for example your name is shreya i cannot call you by any other name because your parents and maybe your family have given you that particular name apart from that when we discuss about the arteries and the vein we know that arteries are the one that carries the blood away from the heart so in this case they are actually carrying the blood away from the heart heart so always remember a for away arteries will always carry the blood away from the heart and that is the reason we call them artery okay like of course it's a name veins always carry the blood towards the heart so whatever blood vessels is carrying towards the heart right we call them as the right veins very good the functions of the semilunar all the valves right in a matter of fact all the valves that we are have discussed over here helps in preventing the back flow of the blood everyone are we clear quick thumbs up everyone it's a very quick recap and we did it yes yes very good very good yes the only the nature of the blood is changing over here good good awesome everyone so now let's move back Okay now I want you to look at this we'll be coming back here again but not now now it's time for us to move back Okay now everyone see over here right you can see the activity of the heart Okay let's just go a little bit zoom in Okay I hope that you can see that heart is beating right we can see the contraction and the relaxation Everyone now see if a person is dead right if a person is dead of course we will not be able to see any activity in the heart can you see over here right can you see yes we can clearly see that there's no activity over here but right 
A, for example, if you are sleeping, yeah, our heart is a little, there's a little bit contraction and relaxation. Now, when we are sitting, yeah, there's more because of course we are functioning, we are doing some activity. And when we are running, everyone, this is how our heart beats if you are running. So we can clearly see that the contraction and relaxation increases. And of course, you, I'm sure you have all have experienced that when you're running, yeah, you have deeper breaths, right? Yes, very good. Kriti will discuss about the heartbeat. Give me some time. Shivanshu noted your point. We will. Okay, everyone. So, are we clear up to here, right? Now, let's quickly go back. Right now, we'll be... Yes. Now, we all are sitting and I'm standing. Okay, now we're moving back, everyone. Give us uh, some... Give us 30 seconds. Can we move back? Yes. Okay. So, now, everyone. I hope that this is clear. Right? Good. Very good. Yes. Heartbeat. Yeah, our heart beats 72 times in a minute. Okay, now let's move ahead everyone. Right, so we have discussed about, uh, about the heart. Right, and we are clear that what we have. I hope that all of you have taken the screenshot, but you haven't. Here's for you everyone. So, uh, I think the screen is not changing. Yes. So everyone, uh, I will be showing you some important slides. Do take the screenshot of these slides. I'm just moving aside. Right, um, so we'll have the screen. Yes, everyone do take a screenshot very quickly and then we will move ahead with today's topic. I hope that all of you have taken the screenshot yesterday, but if you have missed, do take the screenshot. So what we have over here, we have all the chambers of the heart, right? Then of course we have the blood vessels that we have just discussed and of course, um, right, we have the valves also. Okay, clear everyone? Okay, very good. You have taken yesterday. Awesome. So now everyone, we are starting with a cardiac cycle. Now let's understand what is a cardiac cycle. We started with a very brief introduction of it. Now when we discuss about the cardiac cycle, we can say that when there is an alternative contraction and the relaxation, we call that as the cardiac cycle. So when we see the contraction and the relaxation of the atrium and the ventricles, we call it as the cardiac cycle. Now, this has become very, very important for us to understand. Now, you don't have this in your syllabus in greater detail. They have just mentioned the contraction and the relaxation. But we will try our best to make sure that we understand it thoroughly. So, now everyone, let's discuss about the cardiac cycle. So, few minutes back, we saw uh, the visual stride. And in that, we saw the contraction and the relaxation. Now, what we have over here... Again, it's a similar thing, right? We can see the contraction and the relaxation. In that, we have two very, very important terms. I want you to remember that we have the term systole and we have the term diastole. Now, you can write in the chat box and you can tell me what you understand by the systole and the diastole. Right? Just in case if the screen is blurred, please change the setting of your phone. To us, it's perfectly fine. Very good, everyone. So, what is the meaning of systole? In systole, the period of the contraction is called as systole. We, what we see in systole? The contraction of the muscles. And in the relaxation, we will see the diastole. Basically, in diastole, we'll see the relaxation. So, it's like a balloon. Right? I'm sure, I'm sure you would have seen... Right, the pumping uh, of a balloon. If you fill the air in the balloon, you will see that. So this is important, everyone. Do remember this. The easier trick, of course, die is to remember the relax. When if, if unfortunately, if someone is dead, their body is in a kind of relaxed space, right? Nothing is happening there completely. So you remember that with the system. System, something where we, if in any of the system, right, we are kind of contracted and we keep on doing something. So systole is equal to contraction, diastole is equal to relaxation. Please do remember this, it will be helping you to understand the concept of how the heart is working. Everyone give me a quick thumbs up if we are clear with these two terms, right? I will be taking your doubts in a while but I want all of you to stay focused now. If you pay attention to what I am saying, I am sure you will have very minimum doubts. I am not going fast also, okay? Now, everyone, a very, very important thing that we have to understand, the cardiac cycle begins. When it begins, the cardiac cycle will begin when the atriums will contract, right? And they pushes the blood into the ventricles. So, we know that, everyone, we have atrium and we have ventricles. Yes or no? 
right we know that we know that that atriums we have atrium and ventricle yes good so now let's understand a very very important thing if i draw this okay <clears throat> so this is just for us to understand this is not the diagram of the heart right uh, i would not encourage you to draw this in your examination also okay so let's understand everyone okay so i want all of you to pay attention over here now so everyone what will happen we know that lungs say oxygen rich blood is coming yes or no you agree that from the uh, from the lungs we have the oxygen rich blood getting into the right getting into the left atrium yes okay now everyone just imagine for example if you have to fill a water bottle right let's suppose this i think we don't have any other plastic bottle over here but yeah we have this okay yeah we have the syringe yeah i hope that you can see this everyone can we have a zoom in yes can we have the zoom is just if possible i hope that you can see this right yes so everyone relax and contract so of course just imagine for example there is a this left atrium right this is a left atrium it is relaxed first of course it is relaxed so what will happen the blood will enter into the left atrium are we clear yes everyone are we clear yes very good so everyone what are we discussing over here we are discussing the cardiac cycle right how the uh, the movement happens in the heart and how the blood blood gets in so when everyone so i'll write r now everyone i want all of you to stay really very focused okay so i'm writing r because there's a relaxation happening as the atrium left atrium is relaxed what will happen oxygen rich blood will move into the left atrium very good now what will happen this left atrium will contract right it will contract when it will contract you know what will happen the blood from the left atrium will move to left ventricle yes or no are you understanding everyone once we have the contraction the other step will be followed by the relaxation contraction relaxation that's the same thing that we'll be seeing so what we saw we saw the relaxation right suddenly after that we'll see the contraction as the contraction is happening in the left atrium the left ventricle is relaxed right right because it will receive the blood now so it will receive the blood and after that again we will see the contraction and then the blood will move into the aorta so everyone is it clear right now what i'll do i'll write okay from i will write over here so please take a screenshot okay so from the lungs what we have we have pulmonary vein carrying oxygen rich blood it will enter into the left atrium okay i'll just write la left atrium now you tell me everyone when it will be entering when the left atrium is relax okay when the left atrium is relax the blood will enter into the left atrium now we will see that the left atrium will contract as the left ventricle will contract blood moves in left ventricle clear everyone clear good now when the blood is moving into the left ventricle left ventricle is relax now what we will see is that now the left ventricle is contract it is pushing so what will happen the blood will move to aorta clear everyone yes very good right screen is definitely clear so no please you have to stop spamming right
Yes, just in case you can uh, you can change the setting of your phone. Yes, everyone, are we clear? I'll repeat this again so that the right part is also clear. Then we'll move to the double circulation. Everyone, this is super super important. And let me tell you one important thing that in the heart, right, all of this contraction, relaxation is happening simultaneously, right? It's not that it's waiting for the other one. Acha, you do first, then I'll do no. This action is very continuous process. So this is a very continuous process that keeps on happening. Okay? So everyone, I wanted to repeat after me. Clear? Okay, now everyone close your eyes. We have lungs. Lungs say blood goes to from where? Oxygen rich blood goes to heart. Which part of the heart it will go? Left atrium. Okay? Now when it's moving to the left atrium, is it relax or contract? Yes, everyone, right? Everyone quickly tell me when the blood is actually entering into the left atrium, what is the heart condition? Is it relaxed? Very good. Ah, it is relaxed. Now the blood will move to the left ventricle, right? When it's moving, it has to squeeze, right? Blood cannot just go by like this. So atrium will contract. It will squeeze out the blood. So as the blood is moving into the left atrium, we will see that the left atrium is contracting. It will contract. Then the blood is entering into the left ventricle. Now left ventricle is happy and relaxed. Let the blood come. So this is in a relaxed state. It will take the blood which is coming from the atrium. Now left ventricle will say, now that I have the blood with me, I have to pass it to the different body parts. So let me put some pressure. So I will contract, right? Yes, I will contract and the blood will move to the iota. Clear everyone? Clear? Clear everyone? Are we clear? Yes. Okay? Yes, we can, oh yeah, iota. Ayoya. Okay. So everyone, are we clear? The same thing will happen in the right side. Yes? Shamavi. Ah, uh, yes, I am Arsh ma'am. Everyone, welcome. I am I'm your Arsh ma'am. No, oh, I'm really sorry. I'm just kidding around. My name is Ankita. Welcome to the class. Vaishnav, how the visual works, we will see. And I've shown you. You can go back and see that. Very good. Now everyone, let's see the right part. All of you, are you ready? No, 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 Shreya. We will not see blood getting mixed with oxygen in the lungs. Of course, there's a different process. Yes? So, uh, Shreya, I think you have missed the respiration of the class. Please go and watch the session. Your doubts will be clear. Vaishra, we will talk about heart attack. There are many factors. We will be discussing about that later. Not in today's class. Good. Okay. Now, everyone, I have wanted to help me. Let's see the right part. Now everyone, we have the right, right, right atrium. So vena cava is giving the blood to the right atrium. Yes or no? So everyone, what will be the state when the it's it's receiving blood? Jaldi se batao. If the right atrium is receiving the blood from the vena cava, which is carbon dioxide rich blood, what will be the state of right atrium? Very good. The state is relaxed. Good. Now this, right, will pass the blood to the right ventricle, right? And when it is passing the blood, the right atrium has to squeeze, right? It will contract. It will release the blood into the left, sorry, right ventricle. Right ventricle is relaxed. It will take all the blood. Then, of course, the right ventricle when it will contract it will pass the blood to pulmonary artery clear everyone do take a screenshot jaldi say do take a screenshot clear all of you see this is not a part of your syllabus but i want you to understand this this is super important from the if you understand this now, the double circulation part becomes really very easy. Give me a thumbs up everyone. I hope that this is clear. Right? Good. 
you will be learning if you are taking bio uh, biology in your class 11th right you will be learning this in the detail thank you zarina for helping uh, for sharing that information okay chaliye so i hope that you have taken a screenshot because it will be rubbed i cannot uh, come back and see this okay so everyone see over here now let's move ahead see so what we can see over here is the diastole filling systole means pumping so of course in the diastole we see the relaxation and when it's relaxed it fills the blood wo sara blood le lega acha de do mujhe blood and when the ventricles are contracting right what we will see in systole we have the pumping okay now some of you want to see the visuals right here everyone can you see the visuals i i'm just moving aside anyways i am not there in the full screen also everyone just focus over here for 2 3 seconds just try to understand what we see here here actually okay we can see the continuous contraction and the relaxation of the chambers of the heart and once we see that we can clearly see that how the contraction happens and ventricles are moving clear yes so the atriums happens together ventricles happens together shreya for you see everyone we can see relaxation contraction relaxation contraction if you observe this right you will be able to find out everyone first what is happening first we have relaxation relaxation of the atriums then we have the contraction of the atriums then we have the relaxation of the ventricles this is kind of a same time and the contraction of the ventricles yes rohan i didn't get your question but how it happened but this is happening because heart is a pumping organ right so when it pumps when it is beat or we can say it has electrical impulse and because of that it beats right so we will see those movement happening clear everyone so please look at this i know it will take you some time that's why i'm telling you have a look at over here honey if atrium and the ventricles are bachche the chambers of the heart the upper chambers are called as atrium and the lower chambers are called as ventricles ma'am it's happening simultaneously yes it happens bachche saath saath nahi hota it's not that it will wait acha atrium pehle aap apna kaam kar lo nahi aisa nahi hota hai so when the atrium are relaxed and they are getting the blood ventricles are trying to make sure that everything is functioning properly okay now everyone are we clear okay now this was a extra part but i wanted to come back to the original part now if you are clear with this now you have to help me i will tell you in short ab main pura padhaungi dobara se but please just focus over here once okay now let's understand everyone about this interesting interesting thing called as double circulation acha how many of you have heard about this double circulation jaldi se mujhe batao how many of you have heard about double circulation and what is double what is double circulation are bachcho aap ek dusre ko pyar zahir kar rahe ho let's just focus love biology love this topic heart good good i can see that by me 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 i have you have an idea okay very good yes astro that the blood passes twice through the heart pratyush cardiac cycle involves oxygenated okay i have missed your doubt wait okay one cardiac cycle involves oxygenated blood gets into the aorta and the aorta goes back to the lungs yes so we can say that one one heart beat over here in that particular way okay now everyone focus over here now uh, so again this is just for the understanding purpose everyone right please remember that you should not be drawing this diagram in the examination right aisa mat bolna ke hame ma'am ne bataya hai humne to bana diya you will be losing your marks so please don't draw this in the examination but just for our understanding purpose we are going to learn through this okay right atrium ra uh, left atrium right ventricle and left ventricle okay i'll use beautiful different other colors also we have lungs everyone draw along with me draw along with me i hope that you have pen and pencil okay okay so wait i don't have any other color uh, okay blue i can't use okay i'll make it with green
Okay, everyone, I hope that this is visible. So we have right atrium, left atrium, left ventricle, and right ventricle. It's clear, everyone? Right? It's clear? Chalo. Now, okay, we'll use the white, everyone. I'm using the white color I'm writing over here. White is for the oxygen. Okay? Because, of course, the red color will not be that visible. So, I'm using white color for the oxygen purpose. I'm writing it over here. So, please don't get confused. So, we're starting, everyone. Clear? So, everyone, everyone now I want you to breathe. Jaldi se breathe karo. Inhale oxygen, everyone. Breathe. So, as you're breathing, what is happening? Oxygen is going inside your nostrils. Right? Oxygen is rushing towards your lungs. And in the alveoli, we'll see the exchange of the gases. Right? And as, what are we, ga which gas are we interested in? Oxygen. So once the oxygen is there inside the alveoli, it will go into the blood vessels and it will be happily coming to left atrium. Right? With the help of pulmonary artery. Remember this. It is coming along with the help of pulmonary vein. Sorry, I said artery, but it's a pulmonary vein. Okay? Pulmonary vein, everyone. Pulmonary vein is very happy. I am coming with the oxygen. Right? So, left atrium is happy. Yes, I will. Now, I will be working. So, left atrium happily will be taking the blood, which is rich with oxygen. We call that blood as oxygenated blood or oxygen-rich blood. Now, what will happen? What will happen, everyone? Now, we are not doing the systole and diastole over here because it's not a part of your syllabus. But just saying, the relaxation happens. The heart is there inside. The blood is there inside the left atrium. And now, what will happen? Left atrium contracts and it gives the blood to the left ventricle. So, now we have blood in the left ventricle. Are we clear? Yes? Clear? So, from lungs, pulmonary vein carries the blood to the left atrium, left atrium will give blood to the left ventricle. Now, left ventricle has a very, very huge responsibility. And that responsibility is to make sure that blood is being carried to the different parts of the body. So, from the left ventricle, right from the left ventricle, the aorta, will carry the blood, right? The oxygen-rich blood, right? To the different parts of the body. Everyone, are we clear? Right, are we clear? Yes. Protex, we'll discuss about it. You will, we, you can actually find the answer by yourself only. You will come back to that. Okay? So everyone, this is the smallest pathway that we have. Now I'm repeating it again, everyone, please focus. So when we inhale, oxygen comes to our lungs, exchange of gases occurs in the alveoli. Then the alveoli will be giving the oxygen to the blood vessels and the blood vessels will be joining and forming the pulmonary vein. Now pulmonary vein will carry the oxygen-rich blood to the left atrium, right? Those of you who are asking me to repeat, you have to pay attention now, right? You cannot talk in between. So, the pul pulmonary vein carries the oxygen-rich blood to the left atrium. Now, left atrium receives the blood and is ready to give the blood to the left ventricle. Left ventricle receives the blood, right? And it sends the blood to the different part of the body through the largest artery, which is called as the aorta. Are we clear, everyone? Yes? Ma'am, do all the arteries get oxygenated blood from the left ventricle? See, uh, right, it's very important thing for us to understand. Artery is a very, very huge, uh, basically, aorta is a very huge artery. So, what will happen? It divides, right? If, I'm, if you remember in the back visuals, right, we saw the three different pipes kind of structure. Of course, there's a division of it. Right, there's a division of it. So, of course, it goes to different parts and that's how the blood will be traveling. Clear? Okay, now everyone, you have to help me now. We'll be discussing about, we'll be discussing about the right part. Achha, now you tell me because we have discussed. Which vein will carry the carbon dioxide rich blood to the heart? Right atrium. Jaldi se which, which vein 
carries the carbon dioxide rich blood to the right atrium. We are very very specific which carries the blood to the right atrium everyone. CO2. Very good I can see the answer vena cava. So in this particular structure we are not focusing on superior and inferior vena cava. We are understanding the concept. So yes, vena cava carries, takes the all carbon dioxide rich blood. Okay. And give it to the right atrium. Please apni amanat rakho. Very good. Now right atrium say, okay, thank you so much for giving me the work. Now what will happen? This blood will move to the right ventricle. Right atrium to the right ventricle. And from the right ventricle everyone, it will actually move to the Sorry, now I have to find another way. So everyone, this. Did you see this artery? Okay, I'm really sorry for the, this, but for you to understand the differentiate. Can you see the zig 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 wala? I don't know what I'm saying. No, no, no. Can you see this part? This particular part is a pulmonary artery. So the pulmonary artery will carry the carbon dioxide rich blood from the right atrium to the lungs. Done? So everyone, if you see, our blood is traveling twice th through the heart. Right? Our blood is traveling twice through the heart. First, of course, we can say oxidated, deoxidated blood, deoxidated and oxygenated blood. We see that our hearts goes into our, uh, sorry, the blood goes inside our heart twice. That's why we call it as the double circulation. Everyone, are we clear? Yes, it is continuous. Basically, it is happening. So, for example, both the things are happening together. It's not that we have to wait. As you inhale and exhale, right, we see this process happening. Everyone, are we clear? Take a screenshot. Yes, I'm moving aside. Everyone. Okay, everyone. Yes. Done, 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 done. Yes. So, everyone, I hope that this is clear. You have taken a picture, right? Good. Now, I'll be taking some doubts. So, please ask your doubts. Now, shoot your doubts, everyone. Tick, tick, shoot your doubts. Yes. Yes, uh, yes, Bablu, it is. We say that it's a continuous process, right? Difference between circulation and double circulation. Circulation is nothing but the, it's happening once. Right? For example, let's suppose if we are moving, we'll just move once. That is circulation. Now, of course, in the double circulation, the blood moves twice through the heart. That's what double circulation. Pulmonary vein and pulmonary artery ka difference. Pulmonary artery carries carbon dioxide rich blood from the right atrium to the lungs. Pulmonary vein carries oxygen rich blood from lungs to the left atrium. Easy peasy. Very good. Ma'am, does the blood mix with oxygen? Navya, ha. Huh? In the respiration, we have seen that there's an exchange of the gases. The blood have, for example, if it's moving inside, if it's there in the alveoli, right? It is carbon dioxide rich blood. So as the, as the oxygen rush, with the help of diffusion, we will see that the oxygen will come inside the blood vessels, right? Blood pressure, we will discuss in one minute, one minute. Yes. Oh, there's nothing like that. Ke left is good, right is bad. Both are good, right? Just imagine. If we have so much accumulation of the carbon dioxide rich blood, what will happen? Let me ask you a question. You ask me all of this tricky question, everyone. Now let me ask you. Just imagine what will happen if we in our body, if we have the accumulation of carbon dioxide rich blood. Tell me what will happen. Think about it. What will happen? It's a toxic right inside the body. Very good. Very good. So if we have the toxin inside the body, definitely will be our body will be in harm. Right? Oh, people are saying nothing will happen. No, oh, it's very dangerous, right? Yes, of course, we know that uh, there has to be the circulation of things around. Yes. Okay, everyone. So I think this is, this is clear. I want you to focus over here and please look over here. So this is the picture we have. I think this is uh, the one that you have in your textbook also. Right? See over here, we have 
Veena Kawase, we are starting right atrium, then right ventricle. So you can take this picture, everyone. Okay? Or actually take this picture of this, everyone. Jaldi say. Do take a picture. Everyone take a picture of this. Very good. <clears throat> okay. Now, so now this with this, we are actually done with the double circulation. Here are two terms that you will see. We can see the pulmonary circuit and the systemic, cir uh, the systemic circuit. So, uh, what is a pulmonary circuit? Do you have any, I'm sure you have the idea what is the meaning of pulmonary? Yes, everyone? So the pulmonary word over here talks about the lungs. It actually represents the lungs. So the circulation which is happening from lungs to the heart, that circulation is called as the pulmonary circulation. The circulation which is happening from heart to the body, because we have the systems, is called as the systemic circulation. Everyone clear? Pulmonary circulation and systemic circulation. Okay? Good. Okay, you have taken a screenshot. Very good. Yes, Shreya will discuss about that. Please wait. Okay. Now everyone, let's move ahead and let's discuss about the blood circulation in other organism. I can see that many of you are asking me to repeat the things again. We will be having the recap. Don't worry. Right? Don't worry. We will be having the recap. But let's just focus on the main topic today. So, we will be quickly discussing about the various other organs and their circulation. Not there in your syllabus in detail for just for us to understand. Right? Uh, clear? Kriti, systemic circulation means the circulation which is happening from the body to the heart. From heart to the body. Heart se blood aya and goes to the body. That circulation is called as the systemic circulation. Single circulation happens in fish. Very good everyone. So we have Pisces, right? Of course, we have they have two chambered heart. We have amph amphibians and reptiles, which have three chambered heart, exception crocodiles, which have four chambered heart. And then we have mammals, which have four chambered. So let's see everyone over here. We'll discuss about the fish, fishy, fishy. Okay, fish has single circulation. Yes, how many hearts fish have? Chitra, it will be, we will, I'll not say the answer. You just wait for two minutes, you will find the answer. Everyone, fishes have how many hearts? One or two? Very good, very good. So in the fishes, what we see, we see that they just have, right, they have one heart. One heart, of course, even we also have one heart. But they have how many chambers? They have two chambers. They have, right, they have atrium and they have ventricle. So what happens? The blood inside the fish travels, right, travels only single time or we can say they have only single circulation clear everyone yes i'm not ignoring anyone right and see i don't i don't have the control you're not blocking anyone if you keep on spamming automatically you will be put out on a timeout yes okay so if you have a doubt please write see Pratik, Yadav, see this is what we call it as spamming. A bar bar likh rahe ho na, wo spamming ho jati hai. To wo detect ho jayega aur aapko block kar diya jayega for some seconds. You will be back, don't worry. I will take your doubts. Okay. So everyone, so what we have, we have the one, so not, not us, the fishes have the one, one artery, atrium and the one ventricle, right? So they just have the single circulation. Clear? Clear everyone? Good. So just remember they have single circulation. What about the amphibians which have three chambered heart? What do you think? They have single circulation or double circulation? Now I want to know the answer. They have three chambers. I will check but there was some issue with the PDFs, right? So we are trying to fix that. You will be getting the PDF by this week. Hopefully the team said us. So you will get. Okay. What do you think everyone? In amphibians do we have double circulation or single circulation? This is the frog. Is it the, is the same in the frog? No, bache. No, 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 no. Yes, 
this? No. So of course over here if you see they have three chamber heart. How many chambers they have? Three. So we can clearly see that they have atrium, they have two atriums and they have one ventricle. So we can clearly see that they have a mixing of the blood. Now it's a very interesting question everyone that I want to ask that we are warm blooded animals. Yes or no? We call ourselves as the warm blooded animals and we have cold blooded animals right now cold blooded animals are those animals that will be changing their body temperature according to the surrounding yes and we warm blooded animals like birds and of course the mammals wants to maintain the temperature of their body right so for us for humans for mammals and for birds mixing of the blood is not good if there is a mixing of the blood, we will not be able to maintain our temperature. It is really very important for us to maintain our temperature. Whereas in the case of the amphibians and reptiles, they are, they are cold blooded animal. So that is why even if there is a mixing of the blood, it will, be, it will not be causing any harm to them. That is the reason we see that in the amphibians and in the reptiles, there is usually the mixing of the blood. Clear? So we here we can see the blood will be getting mixed in the ventricle. Yes, they do have the double circulation. Okay, we can clearly see from the diagram itself. See, lungs and skin capillaries, they are getting towards the heart. Then from heart to the body and again coming back to the heart and going back again. So, they have the double circulation. Actually, the picture gave away the answer. Right, they have the double circulation. Now, Let's talk about the reptiles everyone. We have the lizard over here. Now of course snake is also a reptile. Yes. We know that snake is also a reptile. So those of you who are asking ma'am. Snake mein kaisa hoga to. Aise hoga circulation. They also have double circulation. Because they have three chambered heart. Not. Uh, see again over here. The heart that we have has four chamber. Right. But not all the reptiles have the four chambered heart. You know that right. Only crocodile have. So, just in case, the other reptiles will also have the same thing. And, of course, finally we have the mammals and, yeah, it is same like us. Okay. Everyone, are we clear? Which is the blood component that is straw colored, liquid and viscous? You only tell me straw color. So, we have two things. You can think about of that. We have plasma also. Straw color, if we say. Right? Sometime, yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, very good, very good. Blood component. Hmm. Duration of the class is one hour. We'll be able to finish this class. Okay. We will be having menti, don't worry. Right? We will be having menti, but in a later part. Right? Next week we will have menti. What is the color of the plasma? Now only you, you, your friend have said. Okay, ma'am. Okay, one minute. What is this? I'll not be able to read from there. Okay, ma'am, pulmonary circulation means right ventricle to pulmonary circulation means right ventricle to not we cannot say like right ventricle to left atrium. No, the circulation we are talking about the organs, but over here, so you cannot say uh, kriti. So you will be saying the circulation which happens from the lungs to the heart and heart to the lungs. Clear? So you will not be using the word about the vein and the arteries. Okay. Ma'am, how the fish heart looks like from inside? Mm, I don't have the picture of it now, but you can uh, check on the internet. Very good. So everyone, I think this is clear. Now let me quickly revise what we have studied. Right? So can you put me back to the uh, visuals? Everyone will have the visuals. Okay. Uh, yes. Now let's move to this and we will be finishing our class. But let's just quickly see this. Okay. Here everyone, we will see this heart structure. Okay. So I, everyone, I'm, re, I'm recalling all the things that we have studied. So I want you to stay with me. Right? So I will be repeating all the things. So please make sure you're not spamming and paying attention to the class. Okay. So here we have the structure of the heart everyone. Here we have the beautiful structure. Right? And uh, what we know, our heart is a very important organ it's a muscular organ the size of the heart is about the fist right it is present towards a little bit towards the left side right kind of tilted 
and it's a very important organ. It has the involuntary muscles. That's why we cannot control it. Talking about the chambers and the parts. So in the heart, we have four chambers, right? What are the four, ch uh, four chambers? We have, if you want me to write over here. Yes, we can. Okay, so how many chambers we have everyone? We have four chambers, left atrium, left ventricle, right atrium and right ventricle. Okay, yes, then of course after that what we have, we have the important blood vessels. So what are the blood vessels we have? We have the pulmonary vein, okay. I'm just writing over here. What are the, on the left side and the right side? We have pulmonary vein and we have aorta. Pulmonary vein carries the blood from the lungs to heart. And aorta carries the blood from heart to the body. Then we have the right side. So we have vena cava. Right? Which carries the blood to the right atrium. And we have pulmonary artery. Which carries the blood to the lungs. Right from the right ventricle to the mm, lungs. Clear? Very good, very good everyone. Now what we have? Let's talk about the valves. How many valves we have everyone? Jalti say how many valves we have? Very good. So between the right atrium and right ventricle, we have tricuspid valve between the left atrium and the left ventricle we have the bicuspid valve okay good uh, we also call it the mitral valve very good now we have pulmonary valve right Pulmonary valve between what? We have the pulmonary valve between the right ventricle and pulmonary artery. Okay. Uh, and, okay, one minute. I Let me just move like this. And we have aortic valve between left ventricle to the, ha. Huh, Okay, uh, yeah, iota. Clear? Everyone clear? Yes. Everyone clear? Quick thumbs up. So this is the, all the structure that we have studied about the heart. Valves are not mentioned in your NCRT, but it's an extra information we should know. They have just mentioned that it's like this, it's like this. Okay, this is definitely a good information for all of us to know. Okay, everyone, I don't, Think that you have to take a screenshot because you have already have information. Now, important thing. The other thing that we discussed yesterday, because few of you are asking about the bundle of his. What are the bundle of his? Basically, they are the muscle cells, right? They are the, basically the muscles right over here. Right? We call them as bundle of his and they have Purkinje fibers. Now, these bundle of his and Purkinje fibers will be carrying the Signals. In which signals we are talking about? Electrical signal. So, SA node is present in the right atrium, right? It receives a signal from the nerves and then it transmits a signal to the AV node, which is here at the junction where the ventricle starts, right? So, then it sends a signal through the Purkinje fibers and bundle of his, right, of course, it just carries the information and that is the reason our heart pumps. Clear? AV node and SA node. Done? Yes? Then, of course, we discussed about the two very new and interesting things, everyone. We discussed about the diastole. What is diastole and what is systole? Jaldi say, what is diastole and what is systole? Thank you, Bablu. Okay. Everyone, what is diastole and what is systole? Three marks of pyrotic definition, Anuj, nahi aega. Right? I will tell you what is pyroid, but there is no definition of pyroid for three marks. 
right diastole means the relaxation right where the heart is relaxing where the muscles are relaxing and contraction okay relaxation contraction no utkarsh relaxation is diastole and systole sorry diastole relaxation is diastole and uh, contraction is systole okay good now let's just uh, remove all of this we'll see the visuals okay so everyone i hope that this is clear now no in the board examination they will not be asking you sa and av no don't worry now then we saw everyone the cross section so let's look at over here can you see the blood moving yes or no yes very good kriti at the end of it right very close to the right ventricle at the center where we have the ventricles very good very good so everyone see over here see the red and the blue color i hope that you can see yes right everyone good very good very good so we can see that how the movement is happening we can see the contraction and we can see the relaxation we can see how the left atrium is receiving the oxygen rich blood passing it to the left ventricle and from left ventricle through the pulmonary oh sorry aortic valve which is moving to the aorta yes good very good so everyone with this i would say that we are kind of done right so let's move back let's move back to the screen and let's discuss the final final topic yes kriti we usually say that bmi bachche abhi discuss nahi kar sakte we'll discuss in the future don't worry measure the pressure in your arteries when you <laughs> um we can say that av node uh, knowledge av node and sa node carries the electrical impulse okay now everyone let's talk about the blood vessels now i'm sure you have seen this diagram this particular box in your textbook also it talks about the blood pressure now that we have the understanding everyone about the how the movement is happening and we are clear right we have different movements we have diastole and we have systole so blood pressure right when we talk about the blood pressure we can say that when the blood right when uh, the blood is actually blood is in vessels we know that what will happen as the blood is moving inside the vessel the pressure will increase remember this everyone okay remember this so for example when the heart when the heart is pushing the blood in vessels what will happen the blood pressure will increase clear everyone are we clear with this the blood pressure will increase we'll discuss the value normal value and the lower value also but everyone are we clear with this right so what will happen as the heart is pushing the blood into the vessels what will happen we'll see the pressure will increase we call this pressure as the systolic pressure remember everyone what we call it as systolic pressure so i am writing on top of over here we call this particular pressure as the systolic pressure okay now uh change of color right now when your heart relax right when your heart will relax i am writing over here everyone yes when the heart relax beat and of course when the heart is when the heart is getting refilled when the heart is getting refilled you know what will happen the pressure will drop so the pressure drops and what we call it as we call it as the diastolic pressure clear two pressure everyone we have systolic pressure and when we have these blood the blood when it's running inside our vessels it create a pressure right acha everyone for example we have a small pipe right i'm sure you have seen a straw 
when you when you just have the straw in your mouth and you push the air you can see that air will be moving right of course it will be creating a pressure yes so that is the of course that's the increased pressure is there we, we call it as a systolic pressure and then of course we do and there's nothing in no air in between the straw there's pressure drops and we call it as diastolic pressure now this everyone i hope that this will be helping you to actually see so the normal pressure the normal blood pressure in our human body is 120 which is diastolic pressure and 80 millimeter mg hg sorry the mercury can you see see this is a normal one high pressure low pressure see this is a normal one when everything is normal suddenly it's increasing that means there's more pressure on the blood vessels and sometimes we have low blood pressure means the blood has become very thick it cannot move in the uh, uh, veins so that is definitely not normal I'm sure all of you have seen people fainting in morning assemblies that is not the only reason right and they say Kya re, 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 so blood pressure low ho gaya, heart pura thanda pad gaya, namak do, they, they, they will give you right so what happens our blood is not reaching and of course apart from that there are other things also that can happen so especially in the elders we usually say if they are in a lifestyle where there's a lot of stress we will see that the blood pressure keeps on increasing right yes the blood pressure is increasing and of course it's not good for the body and why the big uh, the blood is becoming thick it could be of various diseases right during the diabetes what happens there's a thickening of the blood just only one various conditions that we have right one of the small condition okay there are chances maybe the blood flow is very slow see everyone what happens there are times when even though the blood is there right the circulation of it become really very slow and it could be because of n number of reason n number of medical reason okay so what is important for all of us to understand over here what is blood pressure the pressure that the blood is putting on the walls all the vessels is called as blood pressure okay and uh, we have the systolic pressure the one that we write in the front is a systolic pressure and the one which goes at the back is a diastolic pressure clear yes please ask it out my name is Ankita ma'am what about the working model they showed yesterday oh yes thank you for reminding me that also I am I just have it over here so yeah we, we have time yeah we have some time yes so we will see that yeah we can do that 120 is a systolic process no but we can say 120 is a value we have the spignomammometer right I'm sure you would have seen to, uh, to measure the blood pressure it's very common right so what happens they will tie it on your hand right and of course with the pressure they will be able to measure so the mati the instrument actually help us to measure these are the values that tell us that that is a normal or it's more or less okay good everyone yes yes Kriti it is okay everyone now what is meant by high and low BP so high BP means the blood pressure is really very high that means that blood is more in the blood vessels and it is it is putting the pressure on the vessels right low blood pressure means there's less blood and it's not moving fast so our body will not be able to receive the blood we all know that we need oxygen we need nutrient and that circulates with the blood if that's not happening we will be feeling very lethargic very lazy very will have fatigue okay okay Riddhi yes I think I'm not so sure you got you're talking about the class 9 session okay everyone are we clear yes Chalo, let's quickly do that experiment so can you put me back on the uh, slide okay everyone we will try something so I want you to see this model right uh, see we have cup over here that has the uh, food that has the food color everyone we will have the we'll have the red food color wish I can show you the water color also so is it possible for us to show the color now can we this cup cup color ah okay maybe I'll I'll be able to show through this everyone see what we have over here everyone I hope that you can see me we can zoom a bit sir 
so i hope that you can see this everyone right yes we are zooming do you want me to put the table down yeah or you want me to increase anything we, have, we can do that yes so everyone see what what we have this is a structure this is a kind of a working model you can actually make this in your school right if you want to now you can okay let's see what i have is a syringe and i hope that you will be able to see i think i did something <laughs> yeah we do uh, everyone when there's a experiments right there's always a <laughs> there's always some accident that happens yeah the syringe came out <laughs> one minute everyone <laughs> yes <laughs> okay so yeah we will quickly clean this up yes hang on is just the food color <laughs> oops yes so everyone over here yeah i so this is a syringe and i i hope that you can see the red color right so we have filled this with the water which have uh, the red food color now of course we will see how the circulation happens right yes so let's go let me just clean this clear this off so that everything is clean and let's see everyone over here so i hope that you can see this yes give me a quick thumbs up everyone if you can see this okay you can see right so see what i'm doing over here i'm filling this now you have to tell me where the blood is going right everyone do tell me where the blood is flowing in which side jaldi se i hope that you can see this right in which side and where the blood is flowing we are actually adding into the right ventricle see over here can you see this part can you see this part this is blue it's going there it's right can we zoom a little bit more if possible see again everyone that's a one thing i usually tell it to all the students always remember for example if you are a doctor and you are looking at the heart of the patient yes so everyone this will be the right side and that is the left never think that your right or your left what they can see right what the patient heart is there just imagine they are there in the front of the table right and the heart is there so their right will be always be the right for us okay so we here we can see that this pipe has the red color okay yeah it is leaking also Okay now let's enter let's just take this and we will be adding it into the right atrium now see i can see that it's moving yeah now let's add the blood into the left side here we go this has to be there so that the the blood can flow everyone so now tell me from left atrium the blood flows to from the left atrium blood goes to very good from the left atrium the blood goes to the right, left ventricle right and from the left ventricle the blood goes to the aorta right aorta and so we will is it yeah yes so we can clearly see the blood moving uh i will come close let's see if this helps for you to see ha this is a better version everyone can you see the blood no it's not the blood right see over here this this is the red part right okay so this this is how from here the blood will enter right goes to the atrium then to the ventricles and then to the aorta Yes, good. Yes. Oh, it's not because of the black screen. This is a black paper. Okay. Everyone, you know what? We will do a shot also on this so that you can make this in your school project. 
Okay, now I think sir we are done. It's okay, we can. Yeah. Okay, everyone. So I hope that you have fun. Right, everyone? Oh, you are asking about. Yes, I can see. Awesome, awesome, everyone. Chalye. So everyone, are we done? Do we, I, I hope that, see, by this, I'm sure you will not have any uh, doubts. And just for the recap, let's quickly revise with, right, let's quickly revise with the heart. Okay? Okay. Ha, okay. Chali everyone. So now, I, uh, yesterday also we had the structure, but we are final everyone. Quickly, in just five minutes, we are revising. And then I will give you the homework and we will say bye-bye. Yes. It's my heart. Okay, so how many chambers we have? We have four chambers. These are the important things we should remember. Four chambers we have. This is the pulmonary artery. Sorry, sorry. It's the vena cava that you see over here. Right, the blue, blue color one. Can we have a zoom in if it's possible? This one, this one is a vena cava which carries the carbon uh, deoxygenated blood. Deoxygenated blood is nothing but the carbon dioxide rich blood. Then on the other side, this red one is the iota which carries the oxygen rich blood or the oxygenated blood. Ta -da. Then everyone, we have four chambers. Left atrium, left ventricle, right atrium, right ventricle. Ta -da. We have the heart out. Right, the half part of the, it's out. And this is how our heart looks inside. Okay, good. And uh, we have four different types of valves. We have tricuspid, tricuspid valve, valve which is present between the right atrium and the left atrium. Sorry, right atrium and right ventricle. And we have the bicuspid valve which is present between the left atrium and the left ventricle. Then we have the pulmonary valve which is present between the right atrium and the pulmonary artery and then we have aortic valve uh, which is present between the left atrium and the iota that is over here clear four valves everyone yes very good now heart moves from uh, so the blood moves from first from of course we talk about from it comes from the pulmonary vein to the right to the left atrium left atrium to the left ventricle left ventricle to the iota and then then to the body then from the body to the right atrium right atrium to right ventricle right ventricle to the pulmonary artery and then from there to the lungs easy peasy it could be hello Raja Shekhar I'm sorry that you can't understand I would request you to watch the session once again this is the end that we all have a, uh, that we are here so I'm really sorry uh, we have revised it for you but I would request you to watch the session once again. It, this is a part two. So there's part one also. So it'll be great if you watch both the sessions. It's okay. Okay, everyone. Now let's move back to our normal position. And I'll give you the little bit. Tiny. Show to the homework. Can we move back? Yes. Okay. Let's move back, everyone. And uh, yes. It's done? Oh, it's uh, No, no, I just, yeah, I want to go back to my PPT mode. Can we have the screen back? It's not the image. Yes. So everyone, here's a homework for all of us. There are three questions. First, of course, we have to trace the movement. Please do trace the movement where we saw the movement of oxygenated blood. Then you have to write the function of the valves that are present. And write the structural difference between the artery and the vein. So, if you have watched all the three sessions, blood, blood vessels, uh, human heart part one and part two, you will be able to answer this question. Okay. Thumbs up everyone, quickly give me thumbs up and wait. I completely forgot about it everyone. How many likes we have? I completely forgot about that. Everyone quickly hit the like button. I should have said it more often, right? Yes. Everyone, please make sure to hit the like button. We should have more likes. Come on, everyone. Right? Please make sure everyone to hit the like button and ask your friends to 
do share the session with them and if you're new here do take a moment and hit that like button okay I can see that uh, some more I think one of you were asking about the timetable here's a timetable yes here we have the timetable everyone Neniesh here you have the timetable okay everyone please do make sure to like the session not requesting for anything more if you've enjoyed the class re-watch it again and again so that your concepts are clear and please make sure to hit the like button yes you like just says that you know that okay you have enjoyed the class and I'll be waiting for your answers write your answer in the comment section uh, comment section below yes good everyone so we have three questions please do write the answer in the comment section below now these are very important questions right now th these are not very lengthy questions but it will be helping you to recap whatever we have studied in these classes okay everyone so on that note bye bye everyone do take care of yourself do keep yourself super motivative please don't forget to read the NCRT textbook after the session and please make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't then bye bye everyone from my side and from my heart my heart says bye bye to you we'll be meeting again really very soon till that time everyone do take care of yourself and keep on learning with Baijus bye bye